today. Eli Regalado sees crowdfunding as the future and is posi positioning his company to be a thought leader in the space of taking innovative companies to market via the crowd. He's personally crowdfunded over $1 million on various crowdfunding platforms, including Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and his top-selling crowdfunding course boasts over 9,500 students globally. His company, Launch Lab, specializes, specializes in building movements around ideas using growth hacking strategies. One of his notable clients, he has helped kickstart Uber. He will address us for about 20 minutes. Please welcome Eli Regalado. You guys hear me okay? Okay. Okay, so uh, my name is Eli Regalado, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about recruiting influencers. I love going after influencers because to me they're like the head Indian. Anybody ever watched Bonanza when you're growing up? Okay, I remember once one episode, you know, the, the cowboys were shooting, you know, and they said, shoot the head Indian, everyone else will scatter, right? So what we try to do with influencers is go after the head Indian and get them to basically make everyone else follow. Oh, oh geez. Okay, I didn't build this slide, so hold on. I think my wife was mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Okay, oh, there you go. Uh, okay, so recruiting influencers is really getting other people to do what you want them to do, uh, but also creating value so that you can help them get what they want. So it's a trade. And if you think about it as a trade, you're going to have success. If you think about this as one-sided, hey, share my campaign link. I don't know how many of those emails I get a day. You're going to have a, a really, really hard, long uphill road. OK, so a quick little background on me. Uh, this is a, an equation for my life. I was an honor roll student, a three-sport letterman, had a couple scholarship offers, and a good family. Anybody know what that equals? That equals uh, all expense pay, trade, paid trip to prison. So I actually boosted a bunch of cars uh, when I was a teenager, and I got an eight-year prison sentence, um, being a spoiled little turd. And I got put in this place. This is actually the prison uh, I was in. I found an uh, image of it online. I was surprised I had one. But uh, when I got in there, I was like, OK, I can either do eight years, or I can try to figure a way out of here. right? And of course, you know, you're going to say, I'm a good boy. I won't do this anymore, right? But you know, that doesn't really work. So I said, OK, what can I do to actually get some influence in this facility to try to get out? So I started teaching the GED class. And we got the most GEDs ever in this prison's history. And the reason is because I had a huge, built, big black cellmate named Blevins Bay. And he was my enforcer. So if you didn't do your homework, you didn't talk to me, you talked to Blevins. We got a lot of GEDs done. <laughs> <laughs> influence, right? So the academic director wrote a letter on my behalf to the judge. and. I, I went to him and I said, hey, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you with this. I want to help you with this program, but I want you to put in a good word for me to the judge because I want to get out of here. I shouldn't be in here. I'm sorry. He's like, OK, yeah, we're going to see what we can do. So he put a letter to the judge for reconsideration. And this one sentence changed my life. Everyone has turning points in their life, and this was a big one for me. And it says, uh, seems everyone believes in Mr. Regalado, but Mr. Regalado. And literally, you know, you said all the things you're going to say, blah, blah, blah. I was on the street two hours later. Like literally two hours later, I was walking on the street. And what I found is that there's a direct correlation between what you think of yourself and what you make of yourself. And that's, you know, it could be spiritual, it could be in business, it could be, you know, anything in life. However you think about your product, yourself, is, is a, there's a direct representation of how that's going to come out on, this, on the tail side of this thing. So I knew that I wasn't spending my life in prison, and I reached out to people who could help me but I helped them first. And this lesson would come in very, 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 very handy. So you know, I wanted to kind of start thinking about a new direction in life. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any connections. Sure, I didn't have an education. Um, but I did have drive, and I convinced a tech CEO to hire me to do sales. And what I was started off as is an appointment setter. So my job was to basically set appointments with C-level executives. Has anyone sold C-level executives in here? Fortune 500 companies? Anybody ever tried cold calling them? Sucks. <laughs> so what I did is I said, OK, after about the first month that they're getting hung up on, 
Um, I was like, I got to figure out a better way to do this. So I started, I Googled, I said, what problems do CIOs have, right? And there was a, a, this gap between what's being taught in colleges and what's being uh, uh, practiced in real life, right? And I said, okay, cool. Everyone agrees on this problem. You know, no one's going to, you know, compete against it. So I said, I'm going to start a nonprofit called Sigma IT, where C-level executives mentor high school and college age youth pursuing MS degrees. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Next time I called that CIO, I was the executive director of this nonprofit that I literally just made up. And you know, it was an actual legit deal, but we got a fiscal sponsor. We basically fast-tracked the whole thing. And everyone said, yeah, sure, we'd love to talk. Right? And so we started having these events, and you know, it was kind of like, it was OK. It was kind of engaging. Not really. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I said, OK, I've got to find people smarter than me to kind of speak at these things. So I got Molly Rousey. She's the former CIO for the city and county of Denver. And I just had these different CIOs speak. And this is kind of like an aha moment, my light bulb moment, where I'm like, OK, so if I can get people of influence to talk to their peers, everyone else will kind of follow this. And I'm like, well, OK, well, who, well, who else can I get? Uh, and I'm going to get to that in a second. But here is kind of like my, my formula or my, my checklist I go off of when I'm doing this. So identify what it is you want. And be clear about this, you guys. That, that when I first started doing this and reaching out to influencers, and you'll see some of these names in your second, I was just like, hey, can you help me? Sure, what do you want me to do? Uh, I don't know, I didn't know you'd say yes. You know? <laughs> so be very clear on what it is you want. Identify what they want, okay? Um, if you guys focus on these three words, wants, fears, loves, everyone is gonna make a decision based on one of those three words. They want something, they fear something, or they love something. If you can figure out two or three of those and put them all together, you've got a win combination. Uh, determine how you can help them and get what they want. Be very clear about that. Be very short and specific in your ask. Surround your ask with other influence. So if you can find other people that they know and respect and drop their name. Um, and then also ask for intros to other influencers once you make that one relationship. Who knows who this guy is? Who here has heard of the internet? This is one of the four founders. This is the chief scientist of the, this is Larry Roberts. So he's the chief scientist of the ARPANET project, which later became the internet. And so I literally like found this dude, and I'm like, oh my god, this guy's still alive? You know? <laughs> and so I sent him an email, and I said, Larry, I know that you have this new company called Anagram, and you're trying to sell CIOs, and I have this whole group of CIOs that would love to hear from you. Can you come out and speak? I'll pay you for your flight. Sure. And then this, this thing just took off like a rocket, Sigma IT, right? I mean, I could literally get anybody after that in the tech world once I had this guy, okay? So what's in it for them? Room full of potential customers. What's in it for me? Room full of potential customers, right? So it's a win-win situation. And when you guys think in those, 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 those mindsets, everything else makes sense. Uh, okay, Steve Wozniak, anybody know him? Okay, same thing, how I got Steve Wozniak, okay, so I started reaching out to him. Um, well, at first I wanted to get him. I was consulting for this magazine, and they said, we'll give you 10 grand if you can get a meeting with Steve Wozniak. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get a meeting. So I uh, started researching this, and I said, what does Steve love? And I figured out that he loved kids, and I figured out that he actually founded this museum that was in the middle of a donor drive. Okay? And so I called him. Um, I emailed him, excuse me. And I said, hey, Steve, I want to interview you for this magazine. Here's what it does. Here's what it goes to, blah, 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 blah. And of course, his response is, hey, great, I appreciate it. I'm sure as you can understand, I get these all the time. And I said, yes, but I also know that you founded this museum who's in the middle of a donor drive and I have a $1,000 check I'd love to give to him. Next email. Next Tuesday o'clock. Find out what they want, guys, OK? So sell them what's in it for them. Steve, you can help kids. What's in it for me? I got paid. All right, uh, complete the circle when you can. OK, so this is my buddy Sam Mathan, um, who's actually was Larry's CEO in this new company. And I had to have a place in uh, California to hold this meeting. So I called Sam. I'm like, hey, dude, can I use your conference room? He's like, oh, you know, we're, we're busy. We got a meeting in there. I'm like, ah, oh, OK. He's like, wow, who are you meeting with? I was like, Steve Wozniak. And he's like, I mean, we'll, we'll move the meeting, right? <laughs> And so, anyway, I'm sitting there in this room, and there's Larry, and there's Steve, and these two are talking to each other and asking questions. I'm like, hold on, you guys don't know each other? And they said, no. I go, you've never met? Uh-uh. So we got the inventor of the internet, and we got, you know, co-founder of Apple, and they'd never met. And so by basically combining that circle, these two are buddies today, and it, it was just a really cool feeling. So, you know, tie those, uh, tie those little loops up when you can. 
Um, okay, so how does this actually translate into crowdfunded dollars? So here's a uh, campaign called Adam's Express. This is like a little, I don't know, uh, think of like Legos on crack. Um, they basically talk to your iPhone and you can build cars and drive them type thing. And raise $103,000 from a $100,000 target. And one of the ways we did it, we got our buddy Waz to back it. Okay, so if it's good enough for Waz, it's good enough for you, right? We actually use that as a press single. Uh, we got a ton of press off it, too. Oop, oop, there we go. Okay, that's come back on that. Okay, next one. Uh, rise Up Case Study. Okay, so we're, um, I, so I've spent a year working on this one. Um, and this is basically a movie with some of the biggest entrepreneurial culture, you know, changing social entrepreneur change makers on the planet. So you'd think with all these names, it'd be a lot easier to get a meeting. And for uh, the most part, it has. But what, you've, what I noticed here on this particular case study is A-listers are good to, for name dropping and to build um, uh, credibility, OK? B-listers and C-listers are the ones that do all the work, OK? Does anybody know what a B-lister and C-lister is? Okay, so a B-lister and C-lister is somebody that's right on the cusp of becoming an A-lister, okay? So maybe they're not in the public eye as much as Tony Robbins or an up-and-coming name. Um, they're not, you know, John Mackey, but maybe it's somebody that's doing something you know, in the organic, you know, health food industry, et cetera, et cetera. So these are the people that are actually going to put the foot to ass to actually get things done, and those are the people you want to go after to start making introductions, that type of stuff. The A-listers are great, but they're really just going to just be kind of like a, a, a way in the door. Um, think of this as a grassroots movement with, with top-down support. So I start going after uh, B and C listers in different spaces, like in the success space, you know, personal development space, et cetera, finding people who would want to have their name associated with these people I just showed you with, right? One of the guys I found was Joel Brown. Anybody ever heard of Joel? Anybody ever heard of a blog called Addicted to Success? Okay, it's the number one success blog in the world. Um, he's out of Australia. He's actually a high school dropout, too. He sold copiers. and. Sucked at it, so he started this book. Anyways, um, so I said, OK, I'm going to reach out to Joel. And the reason I like using Facebook, if you guys don't use Facebook, um, you know, I don't sit there and post pictures of my food. I'll post a lot of pictures of my kids and stuff. But the reason I use Facebook to reach out to people is when you start building a network, it automatically shows the people you have 11 mutual friends. OK? And so when I send an email or an intro uh, to this guy, He's going to see that we have 11 mutual friends, and they're much more likely to respond to you. I never send cold emails via LinkedIn, ever. Because you know, LinkedIn, you're just like, ah, I don't know. who This could be whoever. I'm just going to accept, 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 right? Facebook's a little bit different, OK? So use Facebook. You're going to have better results, way better than email. And a lot of times, you'll have people say, hey, yeah, this sounds good. Let's continue the conversation. Email is my personal email address, OK? So here's what I said to Joel. Hey, I've been tracking you for a while, stalker. Uh, I'm watching a new movie. Uh, you've interviewed a handful of them already. Here's a link. Anyhow, I want to talk to you about being in the movie and speaking at that conference. When can we talk? OK? Real short and sweet. Here's a link. Boom. OK? Eli, thank you. Appreciate reaching out. For some reason, link didn't load for me. I don't know what happened there. Uh, I'm free, blah, 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 blah. Let me know if that works. Thanks. Joel. OK? Very short, short to the point. We're having a conversation, right? Uh, we got Joel involved. Joel brought in his network. He brought in his other influencers. And this is a campaign I just launched two days ago. Um, that's what we've done so far. OK? So we're, we're expecting this thing to break a million bucks. Uh, but uh, people say, wow, that's in two days. No, that's a year just realized in the last two days, OK? So when you guys think about this and you think about your campaign, you have to start putting in the effort and, and going after these people and reaching out and creating relationships and getting them to create relationships. And you just has, it, you're creating a movement, OK, guys? And the difference is, um, if you want to do like, you know, maybe a twenty-five dollars to $50,000 campaign, very little planning. You know, you could probably do that and supplement it with ads, and you're fine. $100,000, you get some good PR with some ads and have a good product, you're fine. You want to start doing multiple six figures, it takes a buttload of work, guys, and a buttload of influence. Um, OK, so again, starting to see the theme here, right? Sellable tenant for them. So hey, co-produce a movie with his peeps, raise his image in the public eye, what's in it for me? 
Joe brings a group of his uh, people to be funders and actors. And he's, you know, he knows a ton of these guys because he's either interviewed them or he's friends with them or whatever. And when they found out what we were doing, a lot of these guys were coming in you know, at uh, you know, $25,000 a pop. Okay? Um, back the campaign, 25K. So the day we went live, uh, we already had $250,000 committed. Um, okay, so ASA, okay, so here, is Anders from Indiegogo here? No? Okay, so people always ask, what platform, Kickstarter, Indiegogo? Um, I say Indiegogo, okay? I mean, I've sent numerous support requests to Kickstarter. I've never got a damn answer. Anders and the Indiegogo team guys have like been over backwards for us, okay? And here's one influencer tip I'm gonna give you right now. This is if you just do one thing to do this, okay? Get in the influencer, get in the email newsletter for Indiegogo, okay? So hit 30% of your target, you know, get 100 backers, and there's a good chance that you're gonna get in the Indiegogo newsletter. And if you do, here's what can happen. This is a campaign I got brought in late on. We only did the PR piece. Nine days, you know, we had hardly had any money. I think we had like maybe eight or nine thousand dollars. We got put in the newsletter. One newsletter brought in nine thousand dollars the first day, and you kind of see that reverse stair step effect. Second time we got put in the newsletter, almost thirty thousand uh, dollars. Third newsletter, twenty-five thousand dollars. But look at the sales velocity. You see in the front when it was kind of like the founder's original efforts, and then we got in the newsletter, and it kind of just stayed up there now. So that's what that's the reason I like Indiegogo versus Kickstarter. So. All right, uh, what if I'm not crowdfunding? I'm gonna cruise through these, right? So if you guys have already, already crowdfunded or you're looking for ways to you know, kind of apply this to your business or your personal life or whatever, um, it works for presidents. These are eight different presidents from Central and South America. I was doing a bunch of international consulting uh, for a, different, a couple of different NGOs. Uh, Use the same methods to actually reach out to presidents. Start dropping names left and right. Start getting some meetings set up. That's the former president of Peru. Give me bunny ears and Aspen. <laughs> and those guys can drink, jeez. Um, land big clients. Uh, so we launched Uber when they came to Denver. Uh, that all came out of a relationship that I leveraged with knowing people that knew people that knew people that knew influencers, right? So this is us shooting a commercial for them. Uh, and that's at the Uber launch party. They had a big Uber big horse. Um, works with entertainers, right? So if you guys want to meet, you know, or, or connect with celebrities, celebrities know what, who? Other celebrities, right? All you need is one to get you in the door. Um, so we met uh, Johnny Five from the Flowbots. He introduced us to an agent over at William Morris. William Morris introduced us to, uh, this is Peter Yarrow, Puff the Magic Dragon. P.S. That song's not about pot. I've asked him. <laughs> um, and it also works for political movements. Anybody heard of the Tea Party? I uh, co-founded a political organization called the Coffee Party a few years ago. I'm really conservative in a lot of my beliefs, um, but I just didn't like how that political narrative was going down in the media. Um, so we started this organization, talk about going viral, got almost a million Facebook fans, um, and it just took off like a rocket. Um, and it also works to get bills passed. So we use the same type of uh, systems um, and process to actually get some legislation passed in crowdfunding. Uh, that's me, that's probably one of the only times, that's but the closest to a suit I get these days. But uh, I figured it was with the governor, I might as well dress up. Um, questions, comments, uh, I do a lot of texting too, guys, so if you guys want to text me or call me, just call me at that number. Use my personal email. Um, the other email, Launch Lab, goes directly into one of my assistants and that's gonna get lost in Never Never Land. So, that's it. Any questions? There's a question. Just real quick. Can you repeat one more time the Indiegogo newsletter, to how to get on that real quick? Yeah, OK. So what you guys want to do is you want to get 30% of your campaign funded. And you want to do it, hopefully, within the first week. If it doesn't hit the first week, it's, it's OK. Um, and then you also want to get at least 100 backers, OK? And now this is an exercise you guys should all do, right? Because so think of it like the Indiegogo newsletter as the end cap of Walmart. Does anybody know how to get an end cap? What? Pay or a high sales volume. That's it. 
So you're going to pay to play, or you're going to have, you're going to have a, a, a lot of sales, and Walmart's going to put you on there uh, because they want to do uh, more sell through, right? So Indiegogo is the same way. They don't make money unless you make money, guys, and they're not going to put you know, some crappy dog food on the end cap because if it's not selling. So what you guys want to do is just get that first initial 30%, um, do it as fast as and do it with you know, at least 100 backers, and you got a good chance of getting into the Indiegogo newsletter. All right, we have a question back here in the back. Yeah, I ran a successful Kickstarter, a pretty good one, and uh, definitely is is uh, you know looking at which platform to do a second one on. Indiegogo, of course, sounds appealing. What's the best transition from those two platforms? Obviously, you have a crowd already, but is there any you know ideas or or better ways of doing it, or or is it kind of a natural thing and nobody really you know looks at it? Yeah, not a whole lot of people look at it. I mean, if you for the people that have a Kickstarter account, they're familiar with what crowdfunding is. The most nine times out of ten, they're going to know what Indiegogo is. Being as you already have that database of emails, um, you know, I would I would say you're launching at Indiegogo, and here's kind of why. What kind of products do you have, or what kind of product are you launching? Yeah, Indiegogo. Make it, anybody that's doing anything tech or gadget related, Indiegogo is putting a ton of resources promoting those types of projects. So when you talk to their team, you'll understand why. But uh, you know, I paid from Indiegogo, but they, they've gone above and beyond and out of their way to help us. So, Question here. Hi. So when you're reaching out to influencers, how do you choose um, to reach out to them? Email, social media, what, what do you consider to decide? Yeah, um, so I usually always do Facebook if I can. Um, and oh, here's one hack too, guys. So if you think about this, when I first started doing this, I didn't really know any of these guys, right? And I didn't have any influence or mutual friends. So I just started thinking, I'm like, okay, well, how in the hell can I get to these guys? And I said, who, who knows all these people? So if I'm, a, if I'm a tech mogul, who knows tech moguls? Media, right? CEOs and, and editors of these media publications. So what I would do is I just started making friends with these guys. I'm like, hey, I really love your publication. And I'm like, gosh, it's so amazing. I love reading it, da, 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 da. I just want you to be my friend to be a good honor. Boom, right? And so when I sent an email to Steve Wozniak, OK, you know, New York Times, Fortune, Wall Street Journal, must be legit. Maybe. <laughs> hey, we've got one more question back here and then one in the front. And then we'll, we'll close out. And Eli, you're going to be here for a while today, is that yeah, right? Yeah, I'll be here all day. Awesome. OK, one question back here. Thank you. Um, do you? recommend um, having like family and friends fund your project just to get that momentum going and is, is that legal on Indiegogo? Uh, yes, so ab absolutely 100% family and friends, but you also you don't want to have a false positive, right? You don't want to have a successful and have it failed because grandma just right? So what I would say is you know, try to get people even if it's and family to be that first hundred, because that's going to give it the steam that it needs. Things like, think of these things like nightclubs, right? You guys ever been to a nightclub opening? There's usually a line door. Do you know who's responsible for that? A promoter, OK? So what people don't realize is most of those people in that bar or that club are either given free drinks or they're paid to be there. That's why they're all gorgeous, right? So, and that kind of gives the club the velocity and, and the, the reputation that needs to be the next big thing. If it's empty, no one's going to come back and it's just going to fail, right? So think of it the same way. Was there one more? One more question. Sure. Ours is um, more in natural world. We have this coral reef restoration yeah. and the reefs are just in a pit and we've done yep. this nanotechnology for forever. So we're getting ready to launch this thing. Sure. So it's not a high-tech device. It's nothing like a flash box or a plug-in thing. Mm -hmm. So is there a Indiegogo, one of these that's more socially oriented? Is it a consumer-focused product? Or is it, is it more of like a cause-focused? I would say cause, yeah. OK. Uh, anybody heard of solar roadways? 
Okay, so, so look at Solar road, Roadways campaign. I, there's, you know, there's people that have different opinions on whether it was legit or not. I don't really care. They did a great job on basically saying, hey, here's the problem, here's what's possible, support it. You're not gonna get a highway put in your backyard, right? But you were basically a part of this next piece of innovation and preservation, if you will. So uh, check that out. Uh, email me, I got a couple other campaigns. We've done some environmental stuff um, and a bunch of stuff with animals in the past. Cool. All right. Thank you so much. Eli Regalado, give it up for him. Thank you.